everybody. Um, I'm Awen. I'm uh, also Holy Crow, and um, I'm a local artist who does art design and evidence of magic. Hi, folks. My name is Meph. Uh, I am a local extrovert, and uh, I am also the proprietor of the Illuminated Seed Society, where I professionally and semi-professionally play with plants. And together, we are the Witch Punk Collective. Yeah, and there's a lot of other members of our collective, too. Um, I'd been trying to figure out like what form I wanted Witch Punk to take, and um, it's really important to me to explore um, healthy development of collectives and be able to make art and support each other through the process of like deepening our witch, witchy practices and also like, you know, really like there's a lot of really young people in the group as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of it for us too is giving an opportunity for the young guys to um, learn how to vent and develop their own brand and also of course like learn all of the yeah. fabulous dark arts. Yeah, and also <laughs> a really important part of it is to kind of be the queer elders that we had when we were young queers. Mm -hmm. To like show, show younger queers that you don't have to like sell out or you, you know. You don't have to go mainstream. You don't, you don't have, to, have to conform you know, to any understanding you, you can be of you. being a regular American queer. Yeah. You, can you can definitely be, stay weird. You can be you and be magic because we are inherently magic. We live between the spaces. Like and that this is like a really deeply held belief that both myself and the Witch Punk Collective have is that queers are inherently magic people and uh, our, our uniqueness, our outsiderness, our, our differentness makes us magical and special. Yeah. And also, like, it's good to tell the kids that because when you're young, queer, like, you don't really have that from folk. So, yeah, and especially right now, we feel like it's really important to step mm -hmm. up and be community yep. and um, just check in. Like, we have a yeah. running text message group that's always, you know, I'm available to them. Yep. So if stuff comes up, they can always message me, that kind of thing. Yep. And um, we gotta we gotta teach the babies the ways, because if we don't teach the babies the ways, who's gonna teach them the ways? Yep. So, yep. And we were both always we were both lucky to have queer fam. Absolutely. Um, growing up, I actually went to um, illegal gay weddings in 1992. <laughs> um, <laughs> I grew up Quaker in North Carolina, and even though they weren't legal, it was still important to our meeting to be able to offer the same you know, uh, rights that anybody else had. Absolutely. So, and, they, and everybody got an actual marriage certificate that was signed by everybody present. Um, I think you can cash those in now for a regular marriage really? certificate. I don't know how that do, works. Really? Do you like do you, do you have to like you can go to one like of the, the government? The county clerk. You're like, hey, this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but it's really cool. And um, so yeah, back in 1992, I totally did that, and that mm -hmm. made a big impression on me. Like, yeah, oh, great. You know, we we don't care if it's legal. We do what's right. Yeah, and you that's know? that's. <laughs> That's kind of where we come from. I mean, we're, we're, we're a chaotic good organization, yeah. I feel like. Um, so uh, one of the important things about us is that, yes, we mentioned that before we are the Witch Punk Collective. Um, mm -hmm. And I had mentioned before we do, we do believe in magic, though belief is a weird squirrely type of term. Yeah, we actually don't really participate in belief very much. Mm -hmm. um, I think belief is the least important part. Um, but that's a whole can of worms that's we all, to get into right that's now. A whole, but that's a whole bucket of uh, epistemology that, yeah. you know, maybe we're just going <laughs> to leave right here. But um, one thing that we do like to do to kind of explore um, spiritual sides, uh, we actually utilize the tarot a lot, mm -hmm. uh, both in our own meetings at the collective and in our personal lives, to kind of, we each have our own way to interact with it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like everybody's unique way kind of not only speaks to how they move through the world, but also, um, you know, really helps and informs their choices. So I'm a comic book nerd. Uh, I'll, you're going to find a lot of witches are comic book nerds, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, so I'm a comic book nerd, uh, and I've utilized the tarot throughout my life uh, as reading it very much like um, archetypes, like almost, you know, like archetypes of parts of the narrative of the human experience to be like oh okay I understand these are big symbols that I understand just like superheroes are big symbols that I understand as heroes yeah so for Meph like in a reading with Meph like Meph really was great at keying in as a writer to the narrative elements mm -hmm. of a tarot card reading yep. because you know you have the archetypes that really do represent 
sometimes a person who is embodying that archetype in your life. Sometimes it's you, sometimes it's a period of your life that's embodying it, you know. And then when you look at several cards in succession, then you're able to sort of create a story that's a narratization of your experience that then kind of lifts you out a little bit from being down in the muck with it so that you can experience it a little bit more with a little more mental space and clarity. You could be up above it, whereas before you were down in it. Exactly. So, um, but for me, like, uh, I, I'm always inspired at your ability to create narratives, um, yes. being, you know, Gosh. <laughs> but for me, um, it's always been a great opportunity to do intuitive readings, check-ins, accountability, you know, like sometimes you like look up a meaning of a, of a card and you go, is that me right now? You know, and, and kind of have to do a little check-in on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, because I started working, um, I, I'm a palm reader with the Poetry Brothel in New York City. We're actually about to go to the Electric Forest Fest. I know a lot of people are heading out that way. So if you look for us, I'll be inside a speakeasy. You will not be able to find me. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> <laughs> donate $70,000 and you will get the password That's for true. the speakeasy. <laughs> if you donate money right now, I will, I will guarantee your entry to the Electric Forest Fest speakeasy with the poetry brothel hidden inside. And if you've ever seen us before or heard about us being there, it is worth it. It's Especially totally worth after it. the show goes insane for the last two hours of the day. Oh, yeah. Um, so, but anyway, as a palm reader, um, I've done... I've done a lot of readings um, with the Poetry Brothel, yep. and then I also started working with the Terror Society. Yep. Um, and the Terror Society is based out of New York and also out of Hollywood, and possibly soon out of Salem, we'll see. Um, but uh, anyway, so um, I went back. Everybody always says, you know, go to the Rider Waite deck. The Rider Waite deck is the best one to learn from. It's the most clear. And I was like, bah, no, I can look at all of the decks, whatever. You know, and then uh, I just did a little eye roll. I was I just know. like, come well, on. I'm owning it. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it turns out, yes, this is a great deck to start with. Definitely do that. Pamela totally. Coleman Smith, amazing queer <laughs> occultist from history. Yep. She actually drew the entire deck in six months. Yep. Um, it was a queer woman, of, an American queer woman of color working primarily with. British straight cis dudes. Yep. Yeah. And so has always been like. Please say her name a lot. <laughs> Pamela, it's the Pamela Coleman Smith deck, people. Pamela Coleman Smith. So. And so. She's a crush too. She's like. Ugh. So anyway. um, I'll just kind of give you a brief little intro here. This is the Magician card. Um, you may have seen it before. Um, the Magician's a really cool card because this represents the mastery of the tools that are given in the tarot. So you have the pentacles, the cups, the swords, and the wands there on the table. And then also this gesture here is, you know, connecting the magician from the earth to the divine. And that really is the role of a practitioner is to sort of become this conduit in some way that connects you from the earth to the divine and allows you to be able to speak what that's all about. The thing that's really interesting about the magician is that, you know, he like he's a tool user, he's got all these things, but he actually has a trickster element. And so if you go over here to the devil card, you'll see that the devil and the magician are actually making a really similar gesture. And um, one of the theories is that the intention behind this is that, you know, the the magician and the devil may actually be the same person. This could be a, a commentary about magic that, you know, this would represent raw power. And then the other figure that kind of is echoed in this card is the lovers. So you can see that, you know, here um, they are, uh, you know, in harmony and here they are chained. And they're actually chained in a way where it's loose enough they could be free, which I find very interesting too. Um, so anyway, I, the, the intricacy of this deck kind of showing the overlap of all of the repetition of the symbols, I just, I totally love, it's so smart. And again, like six months, it just blows my mind. Um, and then here's another one I wanted to show. So here we have, Here we have the High Priestess, um, who is sitting between the pillars. You want to talk about the High Priestess a little bit? Oh, God. 
gosh, uh, <laughs> my my knowledge of the high priestess is not as strong as yours. But um, so the high priestess is sitting between the two pillars, and the two pillars are the pillars from the Temple of Solomon. Uh, and above the high priestess, we see she is um, surrounded by uh, is a horse cart. Uh, surrounded by uh, yo uh, fruits that represent the yoni. Mm -hmm. So it is the pomegranate. And specifically, it's the pomegranate because, you know, the empress here um, is probably Demeter, and the priestess in part embodies Persephone. Um, also, you can see that her gown is turning into water, and this echoes the intuition, the, you know, the knowledge. She also has the Torah. She represents the Old Testament. Um, and then here we have the Hierophant. Now, the Hierophant represents conformity in the social order. And at the feet of the Hierophant are people, um, because that's really what the Hierophant is about. It's also the New Testament. You have symbols of Christianity here. But if you look really closely at their faces, it appears that they could be the same person. It's just that the Hierophant is the high priestess in drag. <laughs> so, you know, like, I just think that that's so yeah. cool. It's really making a statement about the Old Testament and New Testament. And, you know, um, and then of course, the implication that the Empress is Demeter, who is Persephone's mother, is really fascinating. Yeah. You know, talking about the high priestess to the Empress as the exiting from the underworld. And the thing, the thing that I like the most about the mirroring of the two, if you could hold those up again to the camera. For sure. Um, uh, the Hierophant and the high priestess is that the Hierophant is actually um, solar. So there's the solar and the lunar going on with, yeah. the, with the crowns. And the exterior and interior and the masculine and the feminine. And, and, and she has the, the columns of Solomon. He has the keys of Solomon. Right. So they are, so it's, it's a yin and yang type of understanding if you're going to go with binary gender stuff. <laughs> right. But, but the thing is that because it's drag, it's not really binary. Absolutely. Because it could be the same person. Absolutely. So that's really making a strong statement you know, about gender and yep. all of the things. Gender magic. So those are just a few of the things that I've been kind of exploring with this deck. Um, this kind of set the standard. This is the first deck that ever illustrated every single card in the deck. Prior to this, the pip cards, the simple cards didn't have illustrations. Mm -hmm. It was just the major arcana. Mm -hmm. So um, this deck, whether you like it or not, ended up influencing pretty much every deck that yeah. was produced in the 20th century. There were like, what, like three standard style like decks from it. It's like the Rider one, and mm -hmm. then there's the Thoth deck, the Crowley deck, and then there's the Marseille Tarot, which is the old school, like more like a playing card. Exactly. Type of thing. And those are the ones that kind of influenced the majority of the tarots that are out there. So. Right. Um, but yeah, and our, our collective is working um, a lot of the Central Fleas this summer. We're yep. doing two a month. Yep. Um, all of the participants are taking turns reading. Yep. So you'll be able to find readers there. You'll find uh, tarot, palm, pendulum. Yep. We have some people who throw bones. We have yep. some people who, you know, potentially. They came up with their own divination system. Yep. The There's somebody who's one. working on a uh, role-playing game dice throwing system. Yep. Super complex. Yep. We're bringing crystalline yep. structures in the solar system. Crystalline structures of the solar that's system. Right. That's actually going to be the witch punks. Um, that's going to be our when we go into space. Oh, we're doom be, metal band. Yeah, crystalline structures. It's, <laughs> it's going to be the cover of our awesome witch punk collective, Frog Rock. But, um, yeah. But, exactly. Um, but we're gonna, and in, you know, in addition to that, we're also gonna have the Holy Crow, you know, the art design evidence of magic, all of the intentional jewelry and accessories for, you know, all genders and all bodies. And we create um, scents, amulets, uh, perfumes, the whole deal. Yep. So definitely come on, see us. Our next date is gonna be June twenty. June twenty fourth. That's a Sunday. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we look forward to seeing you. We're gonna have all sorts of fun things. I'll bring some fun plants. Yeah, everyone will bring some 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 fun shiny things, and uh, everyone will have a a quirky yeah. time. But so, and most importantly, <laughs> <laughs> enough about us. Remember, if you want that special password to the speakeasy, <laughs> or you want to continue to support free speech, free expression, and community-based like and accessible media, resources, accessible resources, which. Yep. Totally. Mm -hmm. Please, please, please donate. They got a great thing going on here. and We love these folks. We've been next to them many a time. Give them your money.